Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my thoughts slash pretty much what I'll be doing for uh, my early early Atlas tree for 3.18. Now I was kind of dreading making this video because I'm going to be very straightforward. This is not a guide and you should not necessarily even follow this. This is pretty much just telling you my thought process of what I'm doing. Most of the time in the early leagues, I don't really focus on making currency. I just feel that in the past when I've like forced myself to do something because other people are doing it, I typically kind of just start to get annoyed more with Path of Exile. So this is pretty much just literally what I want to do. And I'm going to explain my thought process behind it. Um, a lot of this will actually work for SSF since I'm pretty much I'm kind of in an SSF mindset when I play trade league. I try to trade as little as possible to an extent. Uh, and then that changes, you know, based off of various things. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, so as actually, before I get started, I was watching Tuna, if you guys know uh, Crouching Tuna. He was talking about how this part here is potentially kind of like, not a trap, but not really very efficient nodes. And I kind of agree with him that like, unless you're maybe SSF, it's not really very good to get into this middle wheel. Um, I do like this because I think he likes it as well, just because 3% chance to get Kirak can be pretty nice but i really dislike the the whole like pathing straight down the middle but i'm still gonna do it anyway anyway let's get started so i'm gonna start right away and i'm gonna go into focus inv uh, investigation for betrayal there are a numerous amount of unveils to acquire through betrayal um one quick example of like certain ones would be going over here we've got like life is yes plus one gem 3% regen, hybrid chaos res, fire multi, the list kind of goes on and on, right? We're not going to go into that too much right now. So this is a big, big, big thing for me. You could technically like farm foothills um, and like de-level yourself to get your unlocks, but I just really don't want to do that. I want to just play the game. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how we're immediately starting. Now, I don't know if I'm going to go essence right away. For now, I'm going to skip Essence and Strongbox, and this may be a mistake. Again, the reason why I don't want this to be a guide is this is for me. I don't want you guys to follow this. It's more of just my explanations, right? So, uh, moving on forward, I'm pretty much just going to go literally straight up from here. We're just going to cut down. Now, uh, if I get sick of trading slash say I'm like ahead of the curve, uh, I do think scouting reports for like three points are not necessarily that bad. Um, from my experience in SSF, it's kind of nice. Uh, it's definitely something I'm going to respec like later into the league. But the way I kind of look at this is like, say you get a Kirak mission and all of your missions are crap. And maybe you had no scouting reports, but this allowed you to get like one scouting report. Uh, you could look at that one scouting report as like, oh, that's another one map completion, basically. Um, so not really, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on this. I'm going to try it out again. If I don't like it, I will just respec it. Um, so from here, I'm going to go down to and I'm going to grab bumper crop as I love harvest crafting. Sometimes I ditch it towards later in the league, but at the beginning of the league, getting your character set up with your gear, I really like harvest uh, and bumper crop guarantees that extra harvest. So from here, um, we're going to go right here and we decide on two factors. A is my map sustain horrid. If it is, I'm probably going to go shaping the skies. B, if I'm OK with my map sustain, I'm just going to go right down and go into Betrayal. Uh, and this is basically mainly going to be for Gravicious and some other guys. Um, for the most part, you know, keeping them last and then bargaining and hoping to get, or uh, hoping, I think I just said hoping, hoping to get that Life as ES unveil. Um, then from here, I like taking the extra Betrayal mission and then effective leadership. Um, yeah, so from here, there are two options and I'm not sure exactly I guess three options. There's three options. Number one, we commit to harvest. So we spec more into call the grove. Um, and if we're committing to harvest, then that would mean it is now time to block mods. So uh, blocking mods can be a little tricky. So if you block metamorph, you're kind of losing early game currency because of catalyst and metamorph is not super invasive, but also at the same time, 2% chance of harvest, right? I'm definitely blocking heist markers at the beginning. And the only reason I'm blocking them at the beginning is I said heist markers, but heist. I don't think a lot of people want to buy low level contracts. Blueprints, I think so, but contracts, no. So I'm going to remove this. And then when I'm farming like chain T16s, I'll probably just unremove this because it's very easy for me to pick up a heist and then sell them in bulk later into the league. Um, from here, I'm also kind of torn. 
Uh, I really like Ritual early league. Ritual can just poop out a lot of really good stuff. Uh, it's not really that invasive. Blight, I'm most likely blocking. I just feel that Blight is not super rewarding unless you invest into it. In terms of oils, I found myself getting way more oils from like um, going into Distilled Fungus. I mean, getting an early Blight map and stuff can be kind of cool, but I'd rather just focus on the league mechanics I like. Uh, Delirium, if I get annoyed with it, we can remove it. Um, Metamorph, same thing. If I find myself just not really doing much Metamorph, I'll just block it for more Harvest. Uh, and then Ritual, I just personally like. Right, so from here, um, we have two other options. A, we can commit to the Harvest and basically go down here and block more mods. But I think this is when we're going to just make the really long jump so this is stream of consciousness and this increases um it's 50 more base chance to contain extra content this is really good because in the early game we're not using fragments we're not really using much scarabs uh so i personally really really like this now the reason i'm pathing in this way is because later on when i modify my atlas this is actually where i want to be so from here is going to look terribly inefficient. I am just going to zoom all the way here and grab intelligence gathering. And the reason for intelligence gathering is because I might hypothetically get all of my unveils, in which case I pretty much drop this and I drop this and then I just go back to regular mapping. And whenever I get a safe house, I'll go run my safe house. Uh, I do betrayal very inefficiently, meaning all I care about is the unveils. I'm not trying to maximize my reward gain in safe houses. I just want my unveils and then it's off my Atlas. Right, so this is pretty much how this goes. If map sustain is, you know, horrible. Um, sorry, I meant to pick up shaping this guys earlier, but if map sustain is still horrible, you have two options. Um, you could go ahead and go here and grab like, not this one. You'd go here and grab like shaping the seas and shaping the valleys. But I'd rather not do that, and I'd rather just come this way and grab Shaping the Mountains because this puts me at the second block. And for sure, I don't care about Legion, so that's gone. Um, I don't want Abyss, so that's gone. And Breach I actually like. I will be doing Breach a lot. Uh, and then this sets me up for Essence for the future. Right. So this is pretty much how I want to progress. And again, a lot of things may change depending on, you know, what I realize, etc. But this is just the basic setup. Then going in, so that's pretty much what this is, right? This is actually pretty much exactly this. I just walked you guys through it. So moving into this one, this is basically um, phase two after I have finished my unveils. So you'll notice John is no longer here. We have removed John from here, right? We have started to pick up essence. We've picked up more essence, more essence, more essence. The reasoning for not taking these, uh, I think I'll take these at the beginning to build up some remnants of corruption, but from what I think, I could be wrong, uh, I think Palstron and my chat, don't know if he actually said it, uh, he knows a lot more about essence than me. I think if um, there's a remnant of corruption in your essence, it does not roll the chance of it to become like uh, essence of horror, essence of delirium, etc. So it's really good for building essence of horror, it's not good for actually like getting those crafts i would like for righteous fire right right um so from here there's also two things to take into account uh number one i might be bored with harvest crafting at this point probably not um i did drop like call of the grove here but i did maintain the bumper crop here along with the harvest over here i don't really know if this one's worth it but it's basically one point so it's okay you also notice i went into full harbinger now, the reasoning for Full Harbinger is literally just for like that, oh my god, it could drop a Mirror Shard. It kind of like always gets me a little bit excited. Uh, I actually dropped two Mirror Shards so far. Three Mirror Shards. Yeah, I've dropped three Mirror Shards. One I dropped like seven years ago in Harbinger League on my RF Berserker. Two, I dropped... I think I dropped one in one of my SSF playthroughs like a few leagues ago. And then I dropped one in the Ziz Gauntlet. Uh, so it's just kind of like this little little cool excitement drop, right? And the currency is not that bad. If you're kind of like running maps somewhat quickly, it's really not that bad currency. Um, if it ends up being horrible, I will just like drop it entirely. Um, and uh, I'm not really sure where I would go from there. There's a lot of really good currency making methods. It's just more so like what I want to do. Um, you could go strong boxes. I really kind of want to go strong boxes. I just don't know if I want strong box or Harby at this stage. 
Uh, but yeah, you have so many different ways of making currency. Um, literally every single league mechanic can make you currency. And Righteous Fire is pretty much good for everything with the exception of Blight and Legion and very high delirium but most builds are not running very high delirium on like budget versions right um the reason i say legion is not good is you don't have the coverage of like a bow build or very aoe heavy builds so you don't really typically clear most of the legion if you're legacy of fury it feels okay if you're explode it feels pretty good uh, another one would be blight and that's just because you don't have you're just you just don't do as much damage as other builds i guess you could say i personally have not had an issue with Blight, since we have been using Fire Trap um, as our new source of like damage, right? Before when you were Scorching Ray, it was awful because you're, you're, you're trying to use Flame Wall, it just does like no damage. Um, to be fair, a big one about Blight as well, though, is you kind of really want to use the towers to your advantage, right? Every build can utilize the towers. So, uh, talking on one more point here, um, I have spec fully into Eater of Worlds, and I don't know if I'm taking the Uber version. Obviously, this is based off of how comfortable I feel. Um, but in general, the reason I have taken this, this is where it first starts initially, is I want my Ashes of the Stars. Ashes of the Stars is so big for this build. I want my Ashes. I farmed it in SSF. I now want to farm it in Trade League. Um, so this is a big one for me. This right here is basically just getting some some extra stuff from the boss. I don't really know how worth it it is. I would imagine if I'm actually farming it, it's worth it, but it depends on how fast I'm actually getting to this point. Uh, and then the Shadow of Hunger is just basically for my altars. I'm not sure how dangerous altars are gonna be now. They did seem pretty spook. Um, you'll notice we are located over here. Uh, and this is basically for Eldritch Gaze, depending on how well we can handle like the actual altars. Then the last setup here, which is the most scuffed and most inefficient, um, is basically just showing an example of, uh, you know, I have finished my farm for Eater of Worlds. I don't want it anymore. So I have specced into Shadow of Hunger for altars. I have specced fully into altars. I'm now farming the content more so that I want. That's fun because that's what I want to do, right? So I'm specced fully into Breach. Uh, you can see here. Uh, breach is basically going to be for like the breach stones for breach rings etc you'll notice i have changed up this a little bit um this is now because i guess if we go back here you'll notice i have blocked a few extra mods i don't think delirium is supposed to be blocked so blight is blocked uh metamorph is blocked at this point uh and again you don't have to this is really player preference um heist is blocked but if i'm farming t16 i'd probably unblock it um i have abyss blocked and then yeah legion okay and then going into the last one which i was talking about is the inefficient one where oops a daisy yeah we have basically went into strong boxes um one big thing to talk about i think i could actually uh save points here but one big thing is essence when you are juicing your content uh, a lot of the times this is when i drop essence but if you're still running maps very quickly you want your essence and obviously if you're trying to craft your own gear essence is still very very good um but yeah that's pretty much about it i know it's not really like a guide i just kind of wanted to explain to you guys what it is i'm i plan on doing um this all might be widely inaccurate i could completely modify and change everything um as like for example last league when i was having a lot of fun farming i was full shrines I do want to be full shrines again. This one's kind of jabay, but it's on the challenges now. Um, I do want to do full shrines again. It was so much fun for like juiced content mapping. But yeah, we'll just see how everything kind of goes and how we progress. It's kind of still all up in the air for me. So anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. One more thing I want to plug really fast is a lot of you guys have been trying to access the google docs and it has been slammed so we're currently working on a website as you can tell it's you know not in the best formatting right now uh essentially from here you can just look up at the top so there's like an faq section the faq is quite literally the faq from the google sheets some of some stuff may be like slightly outdated uh, i'll work on updating this as the league goes on but an example you could click and your question will pop up for you no more scrolling, just look for your question, search it, click, and you should be good to go. Um, from here, there's also the crafting section. 
uh, where we still have it in the same format where you just scroll down and you can see all the crafts. Uh, and this is, again, to alleviate because of all of the traffic that is currently happening on the Google Sheets. People are unable to, like, navigate it. Anyway, see you guys all later. Hope you guys have a great time in Sentinel League. Uh, and that's pretty much about it. That's all I got. <laughs> see you guys later.